our next speaker um, is Chris Agee. And Chris Agee is, uh, his father was Phil Agee, um, uh, CIA. He, he um, uh, renounced his time in the CIA in 1968 for what he saw in the organization, in the company and um, ended up passing away in Cuba. And I just want to say, Chris, that I met your dad on his 70th birthday and such a kind, kind man. Um, and, and I want to thank you, thank, thank him through you for, for everything he did for Latin America, um, for stepping up. So Chris Agee is an adjunct professor in the greater New York metropolitan area. He teaches a variety of courses in sociology and political science, and he's the editor and publisher of Covert Action Magazine. Take it away, Chris. Uh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Thank you so much, Rachel. And um, thank you, Asal. Well, that was a very powerful testimony, as, as were all the um, testimonies we've heard so far. Um, and thank you, Emily, Rachel, Frank, and everyone who has organized uh, this event. Um, uh, and thanks for everybody who's showed up and uh, for giving us all the opportunity to share our thoughts on this commemoration. <clears throat> um, so I, I'm the executor of, uh, editor of Covert Action Magazine and teach uh, sociology at CUNY and SUNY. I'm uh, the son of Philip Agee, as um, Rachel mentioned. Um, and uh, who, you know, f my father helped start the magazine called Covert Action Magazine um, back in the late 1970s with Lewis Wolf. Um, Ellen Ray, Bill Schapp, Michael Ratner, William Kunstler, and others. And at Covert Action Magazine, we strive to carry on their work and provide hard-hitting facts, um, facts-based and well-footnoted analysis of U.S. foreign policy and domestic policy. Essentially, we are blowing the whistle on U.S. imperialism and plutocratic interests worldwide. Together with uh, Jeremy Kuzmaroff, our incredible managing editor, and our talented editorial board. We strive to do this online through various publications, including articles, videos, webinars, and podcasts, as well as in-person events, all available at our website um, at covertactionmagazine.com. So please reach out if you wanna get involved and or submit articles. We're particularly looking for writers and mar uh, from marginalized communities in the United States to those in the global South, all of whom are bearing the brunt of class warfare and US imperialism, much of which is carried out through various forms of covert action broadly defined. So on this day, the 20th anniversary of 9-11, <clears throat> for example, we just published the first part of an excellent three-part series by Aaron Good, our new editor at large, Ben Howard and the great Peter Dale Scott, entitled The 20 Year Shadow of 9-11, US Complicity in the terror spectacle and the urgent need to end it. Part one focuses on how the US has used radical Islam and 9-11 to advance imperialism and override the constitution. It provides a reevaluation of 9-11 in light of startling new evidence that undermines the official government story of this traumatic and defining event, which has so tragically continued to misdirect US policy. Um, in this first installment, Aaron, Ben, and Peter examine how the U.S. has for decades utilized Islamic terrorists as assets for its own ends, bringing about the so-called unintended consequences or blowback, as I will comment later and as Asai uh, commented earlier. In part two, we will run on, which we will run on Monday, they look at how CIA figures actively prevented other government agencies from exposing the Al-Qaeda presence in the United States prior to the attacks. And in the, final and th uh, the third and final installment, the authors explore the deep political and historical implications of the US government's emergency powers in order to offer some conclusions about 9-11. So check those articles out as they come out over the next couple of days. The first one is already up. These articles, and the work many are doing in different organizations and, and at different outlets, as well as the testimonials and analysis that we have heard here today have been excellent. And I would like to add a few comments here and some suggestions for action. 
first of all, the whole concept of never forget, right? Um, yeah, as you know, um, as Asal mentioned, it's very important, and has as the testimonies have shown us. But in my experience, this is sort of the, the as the flyer for this event points out, never forget. It, it, it's sort of about, it's sort of a rallying cry, you know, 9-11 and never forget. Understanding 9-11 is unfortunately not about never forgetting. The reality is, is that most never knew <laughs> and still don't know about what's, what happened. And so we're still in the popular consciousness. This 9-11 and never forget is a rallying cry for more war, unfortunately, or a don't mess with us because we won't forget and we're gonna go after you for revenge, right? Unfortunately, what we need to never forget and remember is quite the opposite, as Asal was mentioning. First, we need to do is set the record straight. And then we need to learn from it so as to not forget and change our ways. So 9-11 for me, is a great example of blowback, right? It's a CIA term, as Chalmers Johnson taught in his book published in 2000 and updated with material in 2004 on 9-11. A few weeks after 9-11, Johnson penned the following definition in the nation. Blowback, and I quote, is a CIA term first used in March, 1954 in a recently declassified report on the 1953 operation to overthrow the government of Mohammad Mossadegh in Iran. It is a metaphor for the unintended consequences of the US government's international activities that have been kept secret from the American people. And that was the whole quote. So Johnson uh, and the CIA call it unintended consequences. Perhaps a better term is misunderstood repercussions. What he is also pointing out, Johnson, is that most Americans don't know or understand what is going on behind the scenes and what the US is really doing and, and, and understanding why are we receiving these repercussions. Attacks like the 9-11 are responses to US imperialism, responses to overt military, political, and economic imperialism. Uh, it, and domination, as well as covert activities, including paramilitary operations, clandestine economic warfare, election meddling, eh, assassinations, kidnapping, torture, and the like, all of which serve to advance US corporate interests at the expense of local populations. Interests in access to cheap resources, cheap labor, markets, and geo political control. Another term, in addition to blowback, uh, I'd like to borrow the term from Thank Naomi you. Klein. This is a blood pack book crew. Sorry. This is a blood pack book crew disconnected. Can you still hear? Sorry, can you still hear me? We hear you. Yes. We hear you. Okay. This so a, this is a blood pack book crew. Sorry. This is a blood pack book crew disconnected. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Your Lexus has gone about. wild. <laughs> Trying to interrupt me. All right, shock doctrine, okay, uh, to, to borrow Naomi's term, right? Uh, enforcing economic oppression through neoliberal policy changes in the midst and wake of crises. This can also be applied to uh, using pretexts like 9-11 to launch wars and curtail civil liberties. It's important to note that 9-11 gave the US government carte blanche to implement what it was already doing covertly but now had become law of the land. As uh, uh, John Kiriakou has well pointed out and uh, you know, took a stand on that, um, uh, um, went public about the official torture policy that they had been doing all along, even before 9-11. So we're talking about the US government uses these crises to carry out a hidden agenda of military aggression and crackdowns, including things that we've all talked about today, widespread surveillance, curtailments, of civil liberties, torture, kidnapping, assassination, secret known legal uh, illegal prisons, including Guantanamo, widespread drone warfare programs, it costs trillions of dollars, as David Swanson and um, and uh, Medea Benjamin have point so well pointed out. Suggestions. All right. So what what do we need to remember? Right. What should we never forget? Many of us are doing good things in different ways. 
This event is an exact, excellent example, but we have to figure out how to reach more of the American people, obviously. It's great that this event has brought in so many young people, but this is still a puzzle yet to solve. Firstly, we need to continue to ramp up and disseminate fact-based information, developing a critical consciousness on the way. We need to utilize platform, traditional platforms, but also emerging and innovative ones. We need to look at successful historical examples of people, organizations, and leaders like Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks, Howard Zinn, Oliver Stone, including my father, Philip Agee, who were successful in their activities and getting their messages across. We need to figure out what they did and what they are doing right. Secondly, we need to engage in direct action. Code Pink is a perfect example of that. Engage in an organized marches, demonstrations, civil leaders. We need to mobilize resources and nurture political opportunities. And some we need to educate, agitate, and organize. Uh, many here are already uh, agitators and organizers. Others here or watching online uh, need to educate yourselves and express, and, and who are here to educate yourselves and express solid, solidarity. This is great. But convert yourselves and your activities, if you have not done so already, into educators, activists, agitators, and disseminate information and engage in direct action. And finally, it's all hands on deck. In addition to avoiding millions of more casualties and deaths, climate change is likely to bring about an increase in temperature closer to two degrees centigrade, and the military is one of the greatest contributors to carbon dioxide emissions. We are already experiencing the repercussions. As David Swanson, Medea Benjamin, and others so well demonstrated, we need to eradicate the military budget and use those funds for deploying alternative, renewable, sustainable sources of energy and food, focus on education, healthcare, and affordable housing and the like, immediately transition to a peaceful coexisting uh, coexistence organized around an economy and society focused on serving human need, not profit for the 1%, uh, 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 as Mickey Duff pointed out. And on this 20th anniversary of 9-11, we need to take advantage of this opportunity to never forget and engage in what needs to be done. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Chris right. and friend. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Um, thank you so much.